Hey everyone, Vincenzo Calla here, and welcome to Let's Discuss Politics. Today, I'm glad to be joined by the Ottawa City Councillor for Ward 15, Kitchissippi, Jeff Leeper. Thanks, Jeff, for joining me today. Entirely my pleasure, Vincenzo. Glad to be here. Well, it's so great to have you here. And before we start, I just want to make a note to the audience to make sure you're staying updated with me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, VC Productions 25, staying updated with my website at VincenzoCala.com, and staying here on YouTube by liking, subscribing, and getting in notifications here. So without further ado, let's get this interview started. Sounds good. So our first segment is called Jeff's Story, where we'll talk a bit about who he is and his political history. So first off, can you tell me a bit about yourself, your story, and how you got your start in politics? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So my name is Jeff, and uh, I live in Hintonburg. I've lived all over the city of Ottawa. Uh, I grew up in uh, Nepean, moved to the South End in Hunt Club, uh, moved out to Orleans, and then finally, I want to say 25 or 28 years ago now, uh, I shocked up with my uh, girlfriend in uh, Wellington Village on on Wellington Street. So around that time, I was a journalism student. I um, began contributing to our local volunteer newspaper, which uh, was called News West at the time. And through that, I became interested in municipal issues. The big fight uh, 20 years ago was over a new Loblaws that was going into um, uh, uh, Westboro. And uh, as a a journalism student, as somebody who was working uh, then in the trade press, um, our local community paper had a lot of op-eds. People were saying one thing against the Loblaws and other people were saying something in favor of the Loblaws. And I thought I could make a contribution by um, doing some straightforward reporting according to what I'd learned in school. So I began contributing uh, uh, some journalism stuff to a News West. When my wife and I bought a house in Hintonburg, uh, I was recruited by the Hintonburg Community Association who knew uh, some of the work that I'd done for News West. And uh, for about 17 years, I was part of the Hintonburg Community Association, uh, working on issues like I started a bunch of events in Hintonburg and developed a a bit of a profile uh, and also began working on planning files. Um, Back in 2014, I guess I first got elected, uh, there was a, a widespread feeling across the ward that uh, we were not being well represented um, and uh, a number of us felt that I would have a good op- a good chance to win that election because people knew some of the things I had done like the Hintonburg 5k race and the Hintonburg ball hockey tournament dog movie night was uh, was really popular and they knew the work that I'd been doing advocating for better planning in the ward and uh, I won my election and here I am today. So 2014 came around and you ran for election and you won and you've won two more times since then. But back to 2014, what made you decide that you were going to step up and run for councillor in that election? And and what were some of the reasons you ran? Yeah, so we we didn't feel that we were being well represented by our councillor at the time. Um and after 17 years, I had developed some, you know, significant skills around um, City Hall. I, I knew how City Hall worked. I knew what the issues were. I knew a lot of the personnel at City Hall. And I loved my neighborhood. And I felt as though we we really deserved better, more expert, more engaged representation. And while a lot of people were thinking about running that year, um, I decided to uh, ultimately put my name forward because I, I did feel that I had the best chance to win. And I guess at the time, I was very confident in my ability to uh, deliver, you know, better consultation, more intelligent uh, and uh, thoughtful thinking around city planning issues. I was very interested in all the issues in City Hall. Uh, If you know Hintonburg at all, you know that we are uh, very proud of our neighborhood. And uh, I I was deeply involved in in trying to make Hintonburg a better community. And City Hall seemed like a very good perch from which to be able to make the best contribution to creating the kind of neighborhood that I wanted to live in, that I wanted to raise uh, my son in, that that, uh, I wanted to stay in for a very long time. So it's a combination of having uh, some confidence that I developed some skills and I developed some knowledge in the space, as well as really wanting to make a contribution to my neighborhood. Uh, and and the timing just seemed to work out to uh, work out well. Let's talk a bit now about your your time since 2014 serving as a counselor. So um, the first question I always like to start first is, and you're talking about your neighborhood and serving them. So what is your favorite part about serving your community as their counselor? Yeah, it's um, 
I, I think about that a lot. And you know what? It sometimes changes from day to day because I'll be able to accomplish something that, uh, uh, you know, makes me feel like uh, golfers, you know, uh, golfing is a, is a great analogy. It's a really frustrating sport. I don't play it myself. But I remember those few times when you hit the ball really well and it's a great shot and it does what you want. And you're like, I'm on top of the world. I'm going to do this forever. And that is what accomplishing something like a city council often feels like because it can can be a very frustrating job. Um, I think my favorite things are when I accomplish something that are going to be like a really long-term improvement in Kitchissippi Ward. Uh, so, you know, the, the the things of which I'll be most proud when I'm done this job, uh, we have a new field house uh, in, a, in a development called Van Lang. We're just about to open a new field house in La Roche Park. Um, I've been able to use the ward's cash in lieu of parkland money to acquire two new properties to turn into parks. Those are going to be there for decades and generations to come and and i feel really good about being able to make that contribution to the uh, the long-term uh, enjoyment quality of life of our neighborhood even when i'm long gone and, and now i'm glad that you mentioned some of the things you've been working on because i like to ask what has been your favorite achievement so far over the past eight or so years as as a counselor yeah, sometimes it, it it feels like my most recent achievement is always the one of which I'm most proud. But, you know, we are going to open a new field house in La Roche Park, which is uh, up against Bayview Yards, uh, down toward the river in Mechanicsville. And that, I think, will probably be one of my proudest sort of local achievements in the ward. Um, that is, uh, the, there was a, an old field house that was being used by Somerset West Community Health Center to provide daycare services in. The neighborhood uses it as their local media place it's where people change for skating and i mean it's it was a glorified trailer um and and today it's going to be one of the nicest community field houses in the city and it wasn't easy to get done there are things sometimes that counselors um take credit for but probably would have happened no matter who was in office, right? The LRT is is you know my name's on the LRT plaque and that was going to happen anyways. This field house was something that for several years, um, a key staffer in my office, Fiona and I, had to be very persistent with just constantly working to get community buy-in that this was going to be one of the most important projects in the ward, even if it didn't necessarily serve every neighborhood in the ward. Finding the finding the money um, in, in the city budget, getting the city to commit to millions of dollars in terms of environmental remediation of La Roche Park. It was a lot of work, and it's something for which I feel a lot of pride, and I feel as though I can justifiably say, I did that. Uh, and it didn't just happen uh, while I was counsel. So we're going to go into the next segment now, which is called The World of Politics Around Us, where we'll talk a bit about this world of politics that surrounds us. So before going on to talk about issues and all that, I always like to ask the guest, who is or who was another politician that inspires you as a counselor? Wow, there are a lot. Um, Paul Dewar uh, was um, uh, somebody who I uh, felt very close to, uh, and I, I admired his ability to connect with people. Um, I admired his pragmatism, while at the same time staying true to his principles. Uh, I think that if I ever got anywhere close to his empathy and pragmatism and effectiveness, um, I'd be doing really well, even if I could only achieve uh, part of what uh, part of what he was able to do. And, and finally, now, I always like to end with this question, because it's a question we can talk all day about, but we'll talk about um, issues now. So what do you think is an issue or some issues that need to be focused on more and that you want to be focused on more in in, in the city going forward? Yeah, and that's a fairly easy question to answer right now because we have just been through an election and I don't know that you would be talking to any other city councillor who would say anything other than housing is the critical issue that we're going to work on in this term of council. Um, you know, this wasn't a, a, a coordinated effort on the part of councillors to all come to the table and say housing, housing, housing. It's what we heard from the residents of Ottawa who are very concerned about uh, the crisis in housing in the city right now, uh, whether 
whether that's affordable housing for people who are, are vulnerable and need help, or whether even that's just, you know, market-based housing for people who might be seeking to buy or rent their, their first apartment or, or first house. We heard it from the residents of Ottawa, and that's going to be a real focus. The other one that I think most councillors can agree on, but is, a, is definitely a personal focus of mine as well, is transit. Uh, this city can't be sustainable, either economically or environmentally, unless we have a transit system that works. And you know what? It's The LRT is going to get fixed. Um, you know, the, the LRT obviously has its challenges, but it is going to get fixed. I think the bigger challenge is going to be fixing our bus system. Uh, it has uh, fallen apart. Uh, the wheels have come off the bus. And, and that is something that every councillor needs to be fixated on in this term of council uh, for the sake of, of our city's sustainability. Yeah, and, and the bus system is definitely an important issue. You know, I take the bus every single day. Uh, well, I live in Barhaven, so I take the bus down to Tunney's Pasture, and then I take the okay. train down to U Ottawa. So, so I know the system quite well by now. And you know, you're right. There's a lot to be done to be fixed with the bus system. Um, there's a lot of aging buses that are serving on their last legs. Um, there's one bus I was on where the grab rail was being held together by one screw, and it's just oh my goodness. There's that what there's that, and that's sort of like an extreme. But it shows that, you know, looking at the busing system, looking at routes, looking at the physical condition of the buses generally, and looking at expanding it as we, because um, it's going to have to be, the buses are our alternative to the LRT until the LRT can be expanded up to Canada and Barhaven yep. over the next 10 years or so. But right now we're focusing on the bus system and continuing to to expand upon that is important. Yeah, we need to make sure it's reliable. Uh, one of the biggest hurdles to people taking the bus right now is that they don't know if it's going to come or not. Mm -hmm. um, my ride to City Hall, I'm in Hintonburg. My ride to City Hall is actually easier by bus. Uh, the number 14 takes me virtually from my door to the door of City Hall. But I don't take it very often because um, I don't know whether or not it's going to come. The app, the GPS is, I don't find it's reliable. And so what I end up doing is I, I wind up taking the LRT because I, 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 you know, I'm reasonably confident every time I go to the uh, Tunney's Pasture Station that the LRT is going to be running, but it does mean a longer walk for me. Um, you know, the, the, the 14 would actually be the, the, the faster, more convenient way for me to get to work. I just don't feel as though I can rely on it. Reliability is uh, key. We need to get the service to the schedule that we currently promise people is is the schedule. But then, if we're really going to make it better, we have to we have to make it even more frequent. So frequency is going to be something we'll be able to focus on once we make the current bus system at least reliable. So for somebody like yourself in Barhaven, um, you know, taking the LRT home um, from downtown, let's say late at night. Uh, you may not want to do that if you know that if you miss the bus mm -hmm. to your local bus by one minute, that you've got a 29 minute wait for the next one, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we need to really increase the frequency of the bus, but it's not easy to do. It's going to take a significant financial uh, commitment. And that's the debate the council is going to have to have next year and the year following and the year following. Well, definitely. And, and you know, there's, well, last week I was left standing at the bus station because the bus didn't come and I had to take the car to the parking ride and drive there and then take the parking ride bus. I would love to take the bus at the end of my street to get to Fallowfield Station and whatever or Strandherd Station or whatever one I would take and yep. then take the bus down. But it's not reliable to take a local route. I have to drive the car to the station to for it to be reliable, unfortunately, because at least the 74, 75 same with Canada, the bus is going to line one are somewhat more frequent, but the local routes, if like you said, if you miss it, it'll be another 29 minute wait. So yep. it's it's important to to expand upon that and work on that over the next little while. That's that's a that's a key issue for me. So that's all for today. Thanks, Jeff, so much for joining me. Vincenzo, that was a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Well, it was so great having you. And if you like this interview, make sure to go check out our other interview with Jeff on YouTube for Top 10. If you're watching this at the day of the premiere, it's gonna be coming out on Friday. So Let's Discuss Politics is a V Cala production. So until the next video, I'm Vincenzo Cala signing out.